the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everybody. Mass <laughs> Alex. It is um, a reality, I'm afraid, so I regret all I can say is I'm glad that we can find you. I know it's going to be quite tough uh, to hear at the back, um, so if you are battling at the back, there are still some places in the front, so, so do come forward. But with no cry chapel, I'm going to ask all our young people, and this is the time to take all the young people uh, to, to children's mass. So I ask you to come forward, please, for the blessing and to receive the flames. Uh, the guide them and to give them the courage to respond to your call. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let's make a sound of us. Here we go. Top, bottom, head, right. Here we go. Well done. <laughs> and then we go that way. Here we go. We can take all our young people to find Let's help with listening. <laughs> So as I say, if you are battling to hear at the back, there are still a couple of seats um, available in the front. And so as you're coming into the church, there are some seats available in the front. The Catholics do like to fill up from the back. It's a Catholic thing, don't worry. Um, and so as we come on this 24th Sunday of ordinary time, we come to to celebrate, we come to give thanks to God for the week that has passed. We ask His strength and courage in the week to come. But as we come together, we recognize also in our gospel today the three parables calling us back. The most famous of which is the prodigal son, calling us back again and again into that relationship with Jesus Christ. And so for the times that we have failed in our relationships, let us call them to mind and ask our Heavenly Father for His mercy. And forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my mischievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of the Virgin. All the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, rather that we may serve you with all our heart, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
immortal, invisible, the only God, the honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Yet you never gave me a kid, the 
that I might make merry with my friends. But when the son of yours came, who has devoured your living with olives, you killed for him the fatted calf. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to make merry and be glad, for this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. The Gospel of the Lord. He is like the patient father, 
always waiting for us at the doorway, hoping for our return. What is fundamental here is that whilst God respects our freedom and allows us to make choices which impact on his response, he remains faithful to us forever. And like the Father in today's Gospel, when we come back, he welcomes his children back into his heart, house, filled with love. And his heart rejoices over every child who returns. The gift of confession and reconciliation embraces this exact reality. But what is it that may include our participation in this wondrous gift? Often it is that we presume that we are righteous and we become the judge of others. Sometimes we may even judge God because in our weakness and lack of appreciation of his joy, we think that he should rather punish them, condemn them to death, instead of forgiving them. Like the older brother in the parable, who grows angry when the father welcomes his lost son, if in our heart there is no mercy, no joy in forgiveness, then we are not in true communion with God. It is easy to forget that it is love that saves. It is love of God and neighbor that brings fulfillment to all his demands. And the love of God, his very joy, is his forgiveness. If we prefer to live in a more secular manner, according to an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth, how much more difficult is it, is it for us to escape the clutches of sin and evil? We are often deluded into thinking that with our human justice system, we can save ourselves and save the world. But in reality, only the true justice of God can save us. And where can we encounter this true justice? It is revealed in and on the cross. The cross is the necessary judgment of God on us all and on the world. That sounds pretty ominous. But what it truly reveals about God and about how he judges and loves us, is that in a supreme act of justice, that defeat of the prince of evil once and for all, he gave his life for us. And this supreme act of justice is also the supreme act of mercy. Through it, you are shown the way of love and forgiveness. Jesus specifically calls us to follow that path. He says to us, be merciful, even as your Father is and as we contemplate the season of creation, perhaps we are behaving towards our planet the way that prodigal son behaved to his father, living the life, ignoring our home, just behaving in a selfish and damaging manner, squandering our inheritance. In the opening paragraphs of Paul's letter to Timothy this morning, we heard a fitting summary this relationship we have with God. Paul confirms that he too was a blasphemer and an arrogant persecutor, but that through our Lord's abundant grace, he has been treated mercifully. He confirms unequivocally that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. His final words today place God into a perspective that we ought to offer to him. He concludes, to the King of Ages, incorruptible, invisible, the only God, honor and glory forever and ever. The fact that our actions bring hurt and pain to such an almighty God is indeed a sign, but it's reflective of God's love for us and confirms the fact that He feels great joy in showing us this. But it is up to us to turn around and return home in order to feel the magnitude of his joyous love. Together we stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the 
have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Yes, we are Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Yes, we are Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice is yours, that it might be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our deliverance of all this holy church. Look with favour on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honour of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ. Our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, Jesus humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirits upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, we have saved us Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis South Pope and Stephen our Bishop, with Sylvester his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Alan, whom you have called from this world. Grant that he, who was united with your son, 
in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Save this command and form by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. May the mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ be eternal.
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries this week? Father, we ask your blessing on Freddie, on Peter, on Alison as they celebrate their birthdays. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift that they are to their families, but also to us as a parish. And we ask you to bless them with many more years, all of them pleasing to you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Congratulations. Well done. Just a couple of notices. Um, first of all, a very big thank you to everybody who participated in our uh, sandwich making last week as, as part of the, the, the Nourish program. So thank you very much. Um, it was chaos. <laughs> but it was a good chaos. Um, I must be honest and say we were hoping for about 10 to 15 loaves of bread. There were 67. <laughs> So, um, well done, but that was great. But we got all the young people to do it. There wasn't a knife available in the parish. And thank, by the grace of God, they had never there. But there was organized chaos. It was wonderful, and we're going to keep doing it. I think that's a really, really important thing. So every first uh, um, Sunday, straight after Children's Mass, we're going to ask these parents, supervise, <laughs> our young people to go to the hall and to make the sandwiches. I think it was a wonderful binding, good, good bonding uh, and, and community building exercise. So, so thank you and well done. Um, and as I say, we suddenly had to find more recipients. I promise you it wasn't difficult, uh, but it was, it was uh, a bit of a surprise on Monday morning. So well done and we, we do want to continue this. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful um, experience. Our uh, PPC will be meeting this Tuesday. The uh, newly elected PPC will, there, will elect the uh, new executive, um, and so we have a joint meeting between the old PPC and the new PPC this Tuesday. Um, our seasons of creation. Young people, I know that you did your, your flames during uh, the, the children's liturgy. You are most welcome to come and put them up uh, on the tree straight after Mass. But please ask your parents to help you. Okay? But we do want to get them all onto the tree because we want this tree to be full of flames by the end of September. Adults, parents, put your prayers on the tree. <laughs> we need to we need to also consider, as you've seen on the pamphlet on on, on, on the creation, each week has a theme. Have a look through the week's themes and what the next theme is, please. So please, um, and, and we look at our prayers accordingly based on that. But we do want to um, add what a wonderful. We're starting there. <laughs> okay. So, but, but fantastic to come and put all the um, the the, the, the names onto the tree. And then our prayerful condolences to the family of the Cones on the death of her father last week. She is one of the parish secretaries. So our condolences to the Adshade family. Um, and also to remind you that you know that the funeral of Joy Patel is going to be on Tuesday here in the church at 11 o'clock. The rest of the notices you can have a look at for yourselves. Um, my, my leave for is in October, but I've just put it into the bulletin now so that nobody can tell me all, oh, but I need to be coming to this in that week. <laughs> I'm away for two weeks. Please just be aware that I'm not going to be here for two weeks. So if you do need me to do something or can't see whatever, please make sure it's before the end of September. Other than that, I wish you a blessed week ahead. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Grand announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.